day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. Hope you enjoyed part eight. Uh, and I really, really want us to get a hold of the abundance of grace that we have in our life. And like I said before, it's about walking as you are. Because, see, too many times we have learned to be actors. We learn to, to try to walk the Christian walk, talk the Christian talk. Uh, many of us are turned off and don't want to be Christian because we think that the, the uh, where our behavior is supposed to be conformed to those images that we see of those who go to church. And then we see how a lot of cases people, when they go to church, they, I mean, even many of us growing up, uh, We'll act one way at home, one week or two church, and then all of a sudden when we walk into the, the building, we, we we put on this 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 facade, this this image of of, of, of grace and being magnanimous. And you know, we learn to do that because we feel that that's the expectation that people have with people who go to church or, or how they're supposed to be as Christians. And you know, it's funny to sit there and try to think that we are supposed to have, what well, I guess you can call it, be two-faced or three-faced, you know, uh, different things, playing different roles in front of different people uh, instead of learning to be ourselves. So we gotta remember one thing about this Christian walk is walking with Christ, being led by the Holy Spirit, huh? being oneness with the Father. See, he's with you while you were sinners. And for those who are not born again, he's with you. He's with you when you are born again. And Therefore, it's better to just be who you are under the grace of God than to try to be something that is not real. See, you do get angry, don't we? Some of us, many of us, sometimes slip up and lie. Some of us do things such as drinking too much. Some of us do things such as uh, lusting in the flesh. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's some, some, for some reason we believe that a lot of the things that, of who make, who, what our makeup is, is just turned off, right? For a lady, when they see a man that's attractive, I, I, it's, it doesn't diminish who you are. It's just the fact that that's somebody that you find attractive, even if it's not your spouse or your boyfriend, or for a guy, even if it's not your wife or your, or your girlfriend, you may find somebody attractive. That doesn't disqualify you. That just shows that you're a human. What, what, what coming into Christ means is being transformed to the, his image is a, is a walk for life. Because we, we got many things that try to get us to operate in the flesh. One of the things I want to show you is that what does it mean to, to be in his image? Because a lot of cases we talk about the acting, right? You know, where we, 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 we this is the way, I like George Meyer you said, this is the way we go to church, this is the way we go to church, this is the way we go to church all day long. Uh, but then we leave the church this is the way we really act. This is the way we really are. This is how we want to act. This is how we're going to act at home. This is how we're going to act at work. This is how we're going to act at school. This is, we, in other words, we take the facade off 
And then now it's like, here we are. Well, I want to, I want to tell you, you don't have to do that. Just be who you are and the understanding of you and the grace of God so you can grow. It's not, I'm not asking you to stay what you are. I think that's what we're we get confused. Nobody's asking you to stay somebody who's an adulterer, somebody who's a fornicator, somebody who's a drunkard, somebody who walks in anger, somebody who curses like a, like a sailor. We, we, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about the fact that what I'm saying is, if that's what you are at the point of time that you come into Christ, then that's what you are until you in Christ change you, not people. And don't act because acting does nothing. Huh? Stop acting. Look at this. What does it mean to be a Christian? It means bear fruit. He wants you to bear fruit. So let me show you this scripture right here. I think it's very important. This is something that you can do and still be who you are. This one is in Galatians 5.22. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which would mean self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections in lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desires of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. This is the image we're trying to conform to. It, it, it don't mean how you walk. You, you could be, you know, it, like I said, stop acting. Just, just learn to operate in love. Learn to love yourself. Learn to love other people. If you don't know what love is, let me, he demonstrates love by giving his life. So we're talking about trying to change, Look at love. I'm changing because of love. I don't knock you on the rug. I don't knock you on the refrigerator because of love. Huh? I don't curse you out because of love. At least let me work on that piece because it's gonna take time. Especially if I've never been given, don't know what love looks like. A lot of cases we don't know. Okay? So we gotta grow in the things and bear the, the part of the fruits of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. Because it's, it's not S, it's fruit. And all those characteristics are in that fruit. Love. Look at joy. Come on, man. Except some of you dance, right? Some of us dance. I dance. I, try. I don't dance too good. I know. Okay. But some of us dance. Joy. Look, a lot of us want peace. Be peace with your brother. Be peace with your sister. Be peace with yourself. Learn to try to be at peace with people. Huh? You ain't got to sit there and do wrong. If you do wrong, you steal for somebody, you know you ain't going to get no peace. You know they're not going to have no peace. Long suffering. That means patience. Try to be patient toward people, patient toward yourself, patient toward one another. We got to learn to do these things. This is, the, you don't have to act to do these things. These are the, the characteristics that you want to try to present and manifest in your life through the fruits of the Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit get you, work with you to do that. Gentleness. Instead of being rough and being rude to people, how about being gentle? Goodness, how about trying to learn to do good things? You know what good things is, it's the opposite of bad things. If it's gonna hurt somebody, if it's gonna abuse somebody, if it's gonna be selfish, then it's not a good thing. Faith, this really means the translation is faithfulness. Learn to be faithful. You know, you take them out on a date, pick them up on time, huh? Take them back home on time. Make sure you pay the check if you're a guy, and if you're a young lady, God bless them. Huh? <laughs> Meekness. Meekness doesn't mean weakness. And meekness means is that I am not really somebody that's weak. I'm somebody that's firm in my conviction, firm in who I am. And that's what you really want to be confident who you are. That's what meekness is. It just means I don't have to be rude. Huh? And then temperance. That means self-control. That means that even though you find somebody attractive, be have self-control. Learn to be controlled with yourself. Learn to be controlled of what you do. That's the type of stuff we're talking about when we talk about being transformed into his image. Learn these fruits. And I'm going to make sure, I think I'm going to put these up on every introduction, is to learn the fruits of the Spirit so we don't provoke one another. We don't try to get vain glory of being, being more the, the center of attraction opposed to understanding Jesus is. Amen. All right. I really think that this is this is very key to to the, this year's study, and probably since it's the Word of God, it's going to be probably the essential in all the studies. Is we conform to His image by bearing fruit. We learn to bear fruit, not being the actor 
not this is the way we go to church. We're not into that. It's all about how we can bear fruit in our life. And see, the thing I like about this is against such in verse 23, it says against such there is no law. You're not gonna get in trouble in, in love. You're not gonna get in trouble have being joyful. You're not gonna be in trouble being in peace. You're not gonna get in trouble having long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith. You're not gonna be in trouble with meekness and temperance. You're not going to be, you can't get a ticket. You can't be arrested if you operate in these fruit. Stop trying to operate in some acting. Forget the acting. If you don't know all the scriptures, just know one that's good enough for God. You ain't gonna press people, you're gonna press him. Amen? All right. So I hope you enjoy the study, but I wanted to put this in. This is more focused on the, uh, the being transformed to what it looks like. But you know, we, we want to make sure we understand we got that abundance of grace. We got to understand is that we got to walk in, in, in the things of God by meditating the Word of God, studying the Word of God. We even talk about being in the military. Sometimes you, we, when we first go in the military, we're separated from everybody else. We don't go to the McDonald's and anything else at first. We go through the training. We got to eat in a dining facility. And then we go back to training. Then we go back to studying. Then we go back to training. Then we go back to studying. Well, God wants to take as you walk as walk. Learn to pray. Learn to study the Word of God. Learn to feed yourself daily with the Word of God. But don't, don't get too deep on it. Just read the Word of God. Spend time with God in prayer. And I think you understand that's how you change. Because a lot of things in the media try to choke that word from you. If you feed yourself all news all day, meaning bad news all day, guess what's going to be manifesting in your life? <clears throat> but if you're feeding the word of God daily, watch what's going to be manifest. Those are the type of things we talked about. And you better recognize that you receive when you're born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. Don't get deep on this, what people think receiving the Holy Spirit is. Just understand he came because you receive and believe that Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. That's all that matters. Don't impress people. Press God. See to please him. All right. I hope you enjoyed the study, and I'll catch you next time. This is part B. I'll catch you in part C. Amen. Stay blessed. Bye-bye. Amen. Well stated. In the piece that I, I, I really like to give on that key was that that first verse is, they which receive abundance of grace. Mm -hmm. so, so to let people understand that that walk, that that discipleship, that division, I, I don't mean to use your name much, I'm just saying it's just, just, a, just give me a, a, you know how you have something as a mental hook to just focus your tobacco on some things, is that this kind of discipline uh discipleship is disciplining yourself and 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 the grace is given in in that walk of discipline you know and and on top of that everybody especially most of the people when you when the original question brother jackson is that we are born in sin because of the original offense we are but new creature in christ jesus however we walk in in this flesh and in this flesh dwell is what no good thing mm -hmm. that's why the abundance of grace is needed so that as we do our walk as we do our growing as we do our dying itself we we have we just, we have a, a sin that that sits and dwells with you every day too right it's mm -hmm. pulling but I, I, I wanted to throw the piece you asked and read the question for me anyway was, you remember when we first came into the military, how we first came in there very raw, very, you know, wherever we came from. And you see, not just you, but a whole bunch of people. And and and, and what's that, you know how that, that constant training, that discipline, and the study of the discipline, and the, re, re, you know, repetitiveness. Right. Is, is what, Focus and kind of made you become who you did become in the military, right? right. But it was a constant. And listen, first, I think Elder Johnson, you like to say that all the time. That 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 cadence where you start walking in oneness and, and trying to be in unity, and one man's calling the cadence, and you know how that drill sergeant was doing that, and then the studying. You had to do studying. You had to do. You had to prep for your tests and everything. You was, the same thing, you was living it. Matter of fact, they moved you out when we first came in, y'all. They 
they separated us from what Jim was talking about. We were separated from all the other environments that we grew up in. You weren't exposed too much. You had time to be exposed too much with what the media is saying, what, what, what people are saying, what people in the streets are doing. You won't go into Burger King and Pizza Hut and all those other places. You were, you were, you were isolated. It's almost like a little, uh, uh, an elder. It's almost like it was a retreat. <laughs> you know how you do a Bible retreat? You have, you ever been to one of those retreats, right? Yeah. And you go for a weekend and you know, they say, look, we want you to put your phones away. Uh, and, and we want to focus every day on, on the word of God. It was definitely an indoctrination, no doubt. It, it was too, too, it was, what you saw was, it was actually cutting off of the things that distract us, you know? And same thing with the, even with the military, same thing we do a retreat. It's, 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 it's you kind of put everything else aside for that, that period. And you notice how you become refreshed when you do that. So with my thoughts of Christian daily, is the fact is that when you wake up in the morning, you know, one of your, your, your routines is to sit there and spend that time with God. Huh? You know, just mm -hmm. to listen to the word of God and, and, and meditate on the word of God uh, and, and to talk to him about, hey, this day. I like, see, I, I love the Lord's Prayer. and I call it the Lord's Prayer. I love it because it kind of just give me an outline of what I'm focusing on. You know, give me right. this day my daily bread, right? I don't know, because I get food every day, but I'm asking for give me this day that substance, that word of God every day, right? And I'm talking to who? My Father, our Father, which are in heaven. That that required, to me, that tells me that's a relationship that I'm talking about every day, right? And then I'm doing that, then I'm saying the fact is that uh, forgive me of those things that I've done. I forgive those who've done things to me. Lead me not into, into, you know, into temptation, right? For thine is the kingdom. So there's a reminder of the kingdom. We we're talking last week about being in Chinatown, right? And did I say kingdom of God town, right? <laughs> where where we are, who we are, is constantly a relationship. They kind of change you. Even those like alcoholic. I think uh, Bishop talked about. You know, like if you're an alcoholic, it. To some people, they've been delivered from it because the taste in your mouth is starting to leave. You don't have that same lust or desire that, that you normally used to have before. I think that's what the Holy Spirit is, is you allow him to change you. Uh, you know, I think you've made some excellent points, Pastor. I really do. Excellent points. And, and it just drives home the point that even now and about the, the analogy as it relates to basic training or whatever, how there's such a separation yeah. because they want to change your whole focus to something else. And that means that forgetting about something else yeah. so that you can totally focus here. I think too, but like you were saying, um, but we also have to be leery of getting up as a routine and praying and studying our word for an hour and then get caught up in the news for the next six hours. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that counteracts, and it's kind of lining with our scriptures. Yeah. I was showing you one side, and then the counter to that side is something different. Same thing that you're talking about with that, I believe. But I, I'm, I'm gonna go back to verse 16, because yeah. you're talking about that abundance of grace. Yeah. And, 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 and I think it tells us why Woo. we needed an abundance of grace, because it yeah. says, and not as it was by one that sinned, uh -huh. so is the gift. It is not as just by the one, that, for the judgment yeah. was by one yeah. to condemnation. One offense, uh -huh. but look, but the free gift is of many offenses Woo. unto justification. Yeah. Well, so, 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 so we need abundance of grace because it wasn't but one offense, uh -huh. but that grace covers Many offenses, many offenses. And, and, and there's many offenses. And so we need that abundance of grace to counter that one offense because 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 it wasn't just one offense. Mm. That one offense put us in a place yeah. of many offenses and that particular grace, it counters all of those offenses, not just that one. 